Hi, it's Cindy Fodor. Yeah, it was Stamp the Love, and it's Make It Monday. Wow, I think it's been too long since I did a live. So, in case I was a little fast there, it's Cindy Fodor here with Stamp the Love, and it's Make It Monday. And I'm just getting to my proper screen, and I want to say hello, and I hope that you're having a good week. I have some fun things to show you. I would like to begin to share a tip of the week. Um, so this week my tip is on ink pads and we'll get to that in a minute. But I, um, I just see struggles with some of my customers and I thought, you know what, maybe it would be helpful if I just share some things that I've learned over the years, 25 years, you'd think I'd learn a little something. So I would like to um, share that on my lives on Monday night to, to uh, help you in your crafting journey. I'm going to pop on here and make sure that we are streaming properly. And you can please, while you're popping on, let me know that you're here. Um, give me a thumbs up. Um, or better yet, leave me a comment because that helps me to see exactly who's here. Hi, Muriel. Welcome. So I was fighting with my lights before you all came on. So I'm trying to get my blood pressure back down. They all wanted to fall over. Um, they had good reason. Okay. Granted, I was like making them stand taller and skinnier to give me more space on my table. And they didn't like that. And they decided to tell me that in no uncertain terms because no matter what I did, they fell over and knocked everything else over. And so hopefully I can find everything because it was quite traumatic. All right. My husband even yelled down and asked if everything was okay. So it must have sounded pretty bad. All right. So um, before I start stamping and sharing some tips with you, some of you know that I promised that I'm going to show you how to do a cute... Um, little gift card holder. It's it, it opens up to a little gift bag inside. Um, but we have to do um, the, our countdown. So my countdown to a million. And uh, but the sale was good last week. At least it was for me. I got some good discounts on cardstock and ink. As you can see, I was able to add a whole second set of ink pads to my um, to my collection so that I have extra when I do classes and those are my extra packs of cardstock because they don't fit where I typically leave them. So yes, I had a very large order and a couple of you were able to um, get some sales as well. So that's exciting. So we're down to, I think 31,000, a couple hundred uh, to go. So I'm able to open the 32,000 box. I'm going to pop that off of here. And the prize in this is a, an assorted pack of Christmas glimmer paper. So let me grab that out of the basket. And this is here. It has, um, I think it's cherry cobbler, garden green, and um, Cajun craze maybe. I'm not positive. It looks a little cinnamon cider-ish too. I can't remember what the colors are. But this packet will go... I will be doing a drawing, and anybody that placed an order over the past week um, will get in the drawing for this. So it doesn't matter how much your order was, um, but if you're, I will I will post it here in this um, at this video spot after I finish here, and I'll I'll do that drawing. Okay, um, I also want to tell you about our we uh, yes our seasonal sale was over. It was three days. If you missed it, I, I'm really sorry, but um, it really was a great sale. Um, at least for me, I, um, I don't know. I did get a few dies that I hadn't bought before or even some that I use a lot. And I thought because I cut a lot, um, I was able to get a second set at 20% off. So that was nice. But I wanted to mention that until the 30th, Nove 30th of November, we still have a sale on our uh, special kit. It is $125 value for $75. 
Um, it comes with an opportunity to do this as a business or to just save as a hobby. It says start with savings is what it's called and um, start saving money on your stamping purchases. It is such a smart way to go. Um, if you're spending $100 a month, you definitely need to do this um, because that is the minimum that keeps you going. And um, then you might have friends that you want to share with and you can start, somebody else can start helping you buy your, uh, pay for your monthly quarter, monthly, yeah, your quarterly uh, minimum. So anyways, um, be sure and mention, ask me if you have any questions. I'm here to answer um, and maybe help you figure out if it's right for you. Um, a lot of people might be afraid to take that step because they feel like it's a big step, but here it is. It is $75 worth of, uh, or $75 is the cost. The shipping is free, so it's not a big commitment. And there is no commitment. There is just, you have to sign up for the discount. That's it. You sign up for the discount. So, um, yeah, it's so worth it. And I wish that some of my team members who recently joined could be here to tell you what a good, uh, what a good deal it is and how much fun they're having saving money on things that they didn't think they could buy because of the cost. And so now they're able to, uh, to get some of those things. So, all right, let's get started. Hey, Talara, welcome. All right, so I'm going to switch over to my other camera. And again, I'm going to show you first the tip of the week. And that is how to open our ink pads. These are very different from the other ink pads. I probably should turn this light off. It's a little harsh, maybe. Um, the other ones um, opened a little bit more, like you could put, you push them to open them. These open like a compact, so you can lift it like this, but I found that a lot of my customers are having trouble with that. So this was a brand new ink pad. I had not opened it yet because I want to make sure that I'm not lying to you. So that one just opened easily that way. Um, this one wasn't opened either. But the other tip that I wanted to show you is um, if you have trouble opening it this way, and I think partly because people squeeze here so they can't lift this because they're squeezing this tight, you, um, I'll go back to this one since I opened this one already. You just lightly hold it here and then just lift. And I'm probably pushing back here at the same time. <laughs> I hope it helps you, Sylvia. Um, so here's the other tip. The other tip is this. If you push, if you squeeze here at the top, so away from the Stampin' Up! symbol, up here at the top, um, both sides I'm grabbing a hold of and I'm just going to give it a squeeze. And that pops this up. And then I can open it like so. All right. So let me do that again just to make sure that I'm on camera here good. So I'm squeezing at the end away from the Stampin' Up! sign. I'm not at the edge. I'm here where the where the pad lid is. And I'm squeezing from the, the bottom with these fingers and the top with my thumbs. And just give it a squeeze on both sides. And now I got it too tight. I can't. Um, huh, that's interesting. It opened the first time really easily, but now it's not there. I did find on another one. I tried a couple of my brand new ones to see because I was like, I don't want to lie to you. Um, and when it wouldn't open for me, I did flip it over like I just did there and it opened from the other side easier. So I'm not sure why that's the case. As you saw, this one opened really easily the first time from the front and there it did again. So, um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, but yeah, you can pop it that way or again, just come up here, grab this little lip and just lightly hold it from the side and lift. I personally think that's the easiest way. You can see I am not stressing at all to pull that up. Um, it lifts very easily. And I'll go back up here and press this. This is a little harder for me. I have to press a little harder to do this, but um, I I hear that some people think that's an easier way to go. So whichever works for you, there's two things to try and hopefully that will help you with your ink pads. There was one other thing I wanted to share about ink pads. Since these are brand new, I thought that I would take a stamp that's pretty solid 
like this heart. And sometimes when you go to stamp for the first time, um, I'll use this for Trazzleberry. Sometimes they come very, very inked. So um, it's a little bit hard to, um, to get a good image because it's so inky. So I'm going, and I, I can just see the ink laying on there. I'm going to stay over here so I can stamp again if I need to. Okay, that's not terrible. Um, and I wanted to grab a, um, a photopolymer stamp because they're a little trickier if your stamp is very inky and you have a very solid photopolymer stamp. Um, and if it's too inky, there's a couple of things you can do. I don't think this one is bad. Let me, let me see. Do I have a cleaning pad in here that I can wash this quick? I'm going to try another color just to see. Like I said, sometimes the pads are really inky and then other times they're not. I have an, another uh, Poppy Parade here that looks like they just inked it. It's, I don't know if you can see that. It's got dots all over it like, like it would when I re-ink it and it's brand new. So that's interesting. Um, so we'll see how inky this one is. I don't know, the center of the stamp did not want to ink very well. Yeah, that looks pretty inky. Let's see, can I spit this one here too? I'm going to fix my, I'm not sure if I bumped this or what, but I feel like I'm not staying on camera here. All right, that's pretty good. But what I was going to say, if you're finding that it doesn't ink well, first of all, it might be your stamp because it's new. I'm giving you more than one tip tonight, sorry. I'm going to use up all my tips and then I'll have none left for other weeks. But something you can do is just take it and rub it on your cardstock. Just roughen up the surface and um, just or rub it on your jeans. Get get the surface of it rough, uh, roughed up a little bit and it will grab more ink, especially photopolymer. Um, but another thing that I like to do if I really need to lose some of the ink, if you have photopolymer and it's like, and the ink is just beating up on the stamp, just take, if you have a paper pumpkin block or one of our kit blocks that have the nice square edge, not great for holding, but great for these tips, um, and just pull the ink to the side. You don't have to waste the ink because you can move it around later. Hmm, I lost a light. Um, but pull the ink to the side so that when you go to ink it, um, let me just clean that off before I make a mess. Uh, when you go to ink it, it will be less ink globbing up on your stamp. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a few ideas about stamp pads, okay? That's all I'm going to say about that, unless you guys have questions. And please, I'm going to ask if you have questions about things that aren't working for you or things you're struggling with, please let me know because I'm going to be doing a tip every single week and that'll help me to know what you need. All right, let me show you um, the project that I'm going to do tonight. So this is a really fun gift card holder. Hey Sylvia, welcome. Um, so I'm going to slide the belly band off and this actually I had it folded wrong but it, it goes like that. It opens up to this cute little gift bag inside here where I can put a gift card. I've even got some tissue paper in there. Okay so I'm going to walk you through how to make this tonight. This is a project that we're going to be making at class this month so those of you that attend my classes will get a chance to make this in person. Um, also, for those that place an order this month, you will also get the supplies for this kit. Uh, for December, I'm sorry, not this month. The month coming up, my classes for this month are over. So for December, this will be my one of my projects. So I'm going to grab my scoring tool. For, you, for those of you that just popped on, <laughs> when I, be, right before I came on, my lights were flying, falling all over the place. So it knocked a few things out here. So I have to re, um, regroup. I lost a couple of my markers here. Um, so this is my base card. 
My base card is four and a quarter by 11. So I just cut it in half the long way. And I am going to score that, <clears throat> excuse me, at three and a half and eight and a half. Three and a half and eight and a half. All right, put that aside. My next piece is for my bag. So this is for the little bag inside. This piece is four inches by nine and a half inches. And I'm going to score that on this long side at, <laughs> this is where I'm missing some of my score lines. So um, a, one, a half inch and one inch and then four and a half inches, five inches, five and a half inches, and nine inches. And then I'm gonna turn it this way, and on the four inch side, I'm gonna score it at one and at three and a half. And here's another little tip that when I set this up, if I'm doing this a lot and I will be for class. I took my markers and I added um, just a sharpie to it to show which so which of the markers in here was for one direction and which were for another direction. So let me put my four and a half back in here and then they'll all be in place. So I have these two marked in black because they were for this direction. Okay. All right, let me scoot that aside and I will show you a couple other pieces that I have to do this. Um, so for my inside, for the for where I'm going to put my greeting, I have a four by four piece of basic white and don't mind my horrible fingers because I was opening a thousand boxes today and I meant to get upstairs and wash my hands and put some lotion on because they are just horrible feeling, but I ran out of time. So they're still grungy from all the boxes. Um, all right. So the other pieces that I have, of course, I have my tree that I, I want to tell you what, what I use for this guys, because you're going to love this. This is from our gold and rose gold metallic paper. Now I've been using the gold like crazy. Um, it's beautiful and when I went to to find something to use for this project here's the gold so fun and shimmery um, I was like "Ooh, I think the rose gold in this pack is going to work well with the pink um, and sort of rose goldy look I think of the um, the metallic um, embossing in that and this is the stamp set and the paper from uh, whimsy and wonder that I'm using. So whimsical trees and Christmas trees. So I'm using the die from that and I'll be stamping with some of this on the inside. And then of course the whimsy and wonder paper, which is just so, so beautiful. And I'm trying to use up some of the pieces. I did some for my stamp -a stack, a lot of paper from this. So I'm using some of the pieces that I didn't have to use for that. Let me go ahead and fold these because then I'm going to know which of these is for the front and which is for the inside. I think this big piece, whoops, that's not correct. Did I score this wrong? Um, yeah, that's a problem. Hold on one second. Um, scored at three and a half and eight and a half. Okay. I think I did that right. Let me check three and a half. I'm not sure why that piece is too big. I sort of think that maybe there was a mistake in the, um, in the other piece, in the other, um, on this, on this piece. So I will cut that down. I had it at three and three and three quarters. Let me think here. No, they said three and a half, which is exactly three and a half, but it needed to be three and a quarter. Excuse me while I write that in my notes really quick so that I don't forget to fix that. Three and a quarter. Okay. And then let's see if this piece is right. This should be two and a quarter over here. Let's see which way do I want to put that. 
So this is two and a quarter by four. Everything is four inches that's layered because the card is four and a quarter tall. So everything else is, um, is going to be um, just a quarter of an inch smaller. And I have a cutter here somewhere. Let me just cut this down a quarter of an inch. Let's see, it was at a half, so it needs to go to a quarter. All right, so that's the outside. Let's go ahead and pop those on just to get them out of the way. And then this one. When I get to the end, I will show you one that I did for an event that my upline and one of my downline had on Saturday. And it's a sneak peek at some of our celebration stuff that's coming up in January and February. And I did it, I closed it just a little bit differently than this one. Okay, so for the inside now, so that was three and a quarter and two and a quarter width for that. For the inside, it's gonna be the same, two and a quarter here. And then this one is a little smaller because the bag is going to go right in this fold, okay? So I wanted to, you need to have some space for that to go. So this piece is um, two and three quarters, okay? Two and three quarters, two and a quarter, if you're keeping track. Ooh, I just ripped that. <laughs> of course. I forget to go carefully when I'm doing designer paper and I just get a little carried away. So I'm just doing my regular borders on the outside edge here, leaving this space here open. And then this piece will go in here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tuck this in here and then we'll stamp it when we're done. Actually, I should just stamp it now because, you know, it's not going to be so easy when that bag is in here to get your stamping in there. So, and I thought that this cute little um, thing of, um, yeah, <laughs> Christmas balls. Who I am losing it, girls. Um, the other stamp that I want to keep out is the saying. And there's some, there's some cute sayings in this as well. So I think I'm just going to use that for the inside. And I'm going to use mint macaron. It's so nice having ink pads in here that I can grab if I forget to bring one. All right. Loving my new ink pads. And another thing that we could put in here is a little greeting, which I was thinking about and sort of forgot. Um, this saying says, may the love of the season warm your heart and fill your home. So I think I'll go ahead and stick that in here as well. I think I forget to put, forget how to put a stamp on the block. I'm going to keep that over here so that, okay. There we got that inside stamped. All right. Let me put that aside for a second and close this before I make a mess. All right, now we're ready to use this piece. And I decided to use this really cool striped paper. Isn't that fun? Um, I thought it looks just like a fancy gift bag, so it's going to work perfect for this. Now, what I need to do is cut out every single corner and these little pieces right in here. So I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to get rid of these. You could do this on your cutter if you like. Um, I'm going to choose to just use my scissors and quickly freehand it. And don't worry if it's not perfect. It's not going to show. And I did try a couple different things. I actually tried um, keeping the corners on the top 
but you don't want corners anywhere because you want this bag does make your card a little bulky and so the more that you can get rid of the better to to put less bulk inside of your card okay it's pretty amazing even with tissue paper in there how how little this pops up and I think I can still send it as um, regular price card because it's it's going to smash down fairly well okay now the the wider part is your top this is the tricky part um, if you have a crocodile you can punch your holes in here for your bag handle um, I do um, but it's a big honking thing and I'm not sure that everybody who gets this is going to have a crocodile so I decided that I want to um, Let's see where I want to put this. <laughs> I think I made this little template so that I could get my holes in the right spot. I'm going to try something. Hope, hopefully you'll bear with me. I am going to try to just put a hole with my pokey tool from my uh, take your pick tool. And I'm just going to go in there, press pretty far so that I get a decent size hole. Okay. need to do that with both sides. So you can see how far I would have to punch in there. And a regular handheld punch is not going to go the distance. But maybe you have something like the, the crocodile should, should do that. Okay, so now I'm going to cut some, where'd my ribbon go? Some of our shimmery ribbon, organdy ribbon, glittery ribbon, um, which unfortunately I think right now is on... It's either on back order, it's una I think it's unavailable right now, but it should be coming back in soon, hopefully. Now, this is going to be the trick um, at getting this in here, because when I did the big crocodile thing, it easily slid in, and that did not go too badly. All right. So how many of you give gift cards, um, especially for Christmas? I'm just curious um, how we don't do a lot of that usually. So, um, but, you know, as the kids have gotten older, sometimes it's just easier. And I just wonder this year with the difficulty in being able to get certain things, if that's going to be more... Um, more than usual. So I'm just adding a little adhesive right here and I'm going to just tuck this down. This is going to be the inside of the bag and this flap is going to come down and cover that so you're not even going to see it. Okay, isn't that cool? So there's my little gift handle on this side and and I'm making them small. You, you can make them as big as you want. I just decided to keep it keep it simple and so tuck, tuck, tuck that in Oh, I almost had it. You sort of have to um, push your point in sort of sideways in order to get to not go through the fabric. Sort of tucking it in. And then just pull it in until you have about the amount that you want sticking outside and again we'll add a little bit of seal here and as you know I prefer seal plus um, I find that my customers um, have it's it's easier for them to use um, it will stop by itself I don't have to do anything special I do just have to make sure I don't run that off the edge Sometimes I tend to scoot it, like push it to the side. And I probably should have trimmed that ribbon a little bit. I didn't want that sticking out there. Let me trim this one. Okay, so now we are ready to put this together. So this just gets folded like a W, like a gusset for the bag. Okay, so there's the gusset on that side. Here's the gusset on this side, and then this edge folds in. 
And this is going to go right into that gusset right there. So I'm going to put my adhesive on here. Make sure it's not running over the edge. And then I will just press this flat, lay this flat. And I want to make sure that everything stays nice and square here. So I'm going to just go slowly with that. So there's the edge of my bag. And then my bottom. Um, only gets glued to the card. So this does not glue to anything else. It just glues to the card. So um, so what I do here is just lift this one up. Let me think. I'm lying to you. <laughs> it glues on the bottom like this. Almost told you wrong. I've done three of these now. You'd think I'd remember how to do them. Again, making sure this doesn't go over the edge. Now this is the tricky part and this is where you want your, um, yeah, where is my, um, here it is, my silicone mat. So I'm going to just lay this over on my silicone mat and then I can go ahead and glue the other side. I'm having trouble with this running off the edge here for some reason. Oops, I just tore that. Okay. Gently, gently, gently. Okay. All right. Now, pull this off, off of here. Now it's ready to go in the card. Now I did find that it's a little tricky to get this in here just right because you can see how these ends want to uh, pry open. So it might be best if you just take it and press it down and center it top to bottom in this fold. I don't want to press it down hard because I want to make sure I can fold this well, okay? And then just fold this over on it and press that down good. And then when you open it, there's your bag. Didn't I tell you it was easy? Okay, so there it is, almost completely finished. And I just grabbed a piece of pink tissue paper. Uh, for the other card that I'm going to show you. Well, that's not, I don't have that card. I had some tissue paper from our paper pumpkin kits because they were blue and it was a blue card, but I gave that one away. So that one's not in here. But there's my tissue paper. And then when I close it, I actually tuck this down in here and close it so that this closure is a little bit longer here. So we're finished with the inside. I just have a few things to do on the outside. For this one, we're going to do a belly band uh, so that you can slide it off and you don't have to untie anything. And so I just have a one and a half by 11 inch strip of um, Misty Moonlight. Unfortunately, the paper that I have does not have much Misty Moonlight on it. So this might look a little silly. I might change this to Mint Macaron. I was going to do that anyways, and then I forgot to grab mint macaron, so. Um, so I'm just going to glue this shut here. There I am ripping that again. I'm having a terrible time with that tonight. I'm not sure what I'm doing differently. Okay. <laughs> we close that back. Get that nice and straight. Okay. I didn't do that quite. Oh, that's because this is tucked under here. Okay. I was going to say, I tried to put that um, so that it met at the same place here so that my tree would be right along that edge. I'll tuck this back on here. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, um, I don't want so much of this blue showing or any of the colors that I that I would use here. So I decided to take some of our silver uh, metallic mesh ribbon, which, as you know, is one of my favorite ribbons. I don't like wide ribbons, but this one is so scrunchy that you can make it wide or narrow or however you want it. So I'm going to just chop off a little bit of that there and I'm going to tie this in a bow right here on the front 
and I'm going to tie it to this side because my tree is going to go right there. So you can just scrunch it together a little bit when you tie it and then when you're finished you can just separate that and just make it as beautiful and big as you want. The band is one and a half by eleven. And I'm just going to scoop my ribbon up. And this, if you don't want it to be wide, you can just scrunch it together. However, doesn't that look cool when you look at the piece? It's about exactly the width of the band. So it, I think it just does such a nice job there. Here where it pulls together, you see a little bit more of the blue. And here I'm just going to put a couple glue dots on this and stick it to the front. And this die actually cuts these pieces out but with this paper so far I've been able to just pull the whole thing out of the die and leave those pieces in and I just really like that because um, I don't know just because there's so much pattern behind it I don't really want just this open open tree look so I wanted more of a solid tree okay so that one is finished. Hope you like that. All right, let me just show you the other one and a little sneak peek from Celebration. So I did this one and I, I actually tied my ribbon around and didn't put a belly band on this one. Um, this is some new paper from Celebration along with a stamp set. It's a bundle um, like we had in the spring last year. I think it was the fruit the fruit set um, but anyways so you get the stamp set and the paper and then our gingham ribbon is carrying over which is so cool and then here on the inside I have my little blue bag and some of our tissue paper from paper pumpkin and yeah so gorgeous gorgeous paper you keep your eyes out for that coming up all right, guys, let me see if you have any more questions. My phone is about to die, so it's getting very, very late. Um, I don't see any more questions, but if you do, don't don't be afraid to post or let me know. And, um, yeah, I will have this for class, and I will write up a tutorial for that class. So if you, if you place an order online um, using this host code, and if this host code changes, I will give you another one. Um, this host code will change at the end of this month. So there will be another host code that you can use. But but if you want to get this and you, um, yeah, just let me know. Like I placed an order. I would like to get this uh, this class. So I will send the PDF with it. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you all have a good evening. I will see you next Monday night. Happy Thanksgiving in the meantime. I hope you have a wonderful time with your families, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.